Well, told you guys I wasn't going to stop making these football videos, even though my team, the Philadelphia Eagles, is out of it. Um, just some final thoughts, some things I didn't touch on in my post-game video that I put out on Sunday uh, about the Eagles game versus the Saints. And one of, <laughs> one, one of the things that people attacked me with was when I said, like, in the video, Mark Ingram, who the fuck is this guy? Like, he had a, he had a career, career game for himself, which that was the best game he's ever had in his career. Uh, and people point out to me, well, Archfiend, he's a, he's a Heisman Trophy winner! He's a Heisman Trophy winner, Archfiend! This guy isn't a nobody! I, I, I'm sorry, but he's a what? A Heisman Trophy winner? What the fuck does that mean? He won some college award? Yeah, I know what the Heisman Trophy is. I know it's given to the greatest player of the year. The MVP of sorts. But do you guys seriously want me to go over the laundry list of Heisman Trophy winners that have done jack fucking squat in this league? Let's go over the career of Charlie Ward in the NFL. Remember when he won the Heisman Trophy and then remember when he got drafted by, um, oh fuck, who, who was the fucking team that drafted him in the NFL? Um, oh that's right, he didn't even get fucking drafted. Oh, what a special award that is! You can win it and not even be seen as a draftable commodity in the NFL! Anyway, Mark Ingram is in his third year in the NFL. Do you know what he rushed for this entire season? 380 yards. Surely he had a lot of touchdowns though, right? One touchdown. One touchdown the entire fucking season. So when I said in my video last week, like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, oh my god, he had a career day for himself. It wasn't knocking the fact that he won the Heisman Trophy, which is frankly a worthless award that only means something in the realm of college football. It means that this guy was not a threat. No one, no one, none of the Saints fans, none of the Eagles fans, none of the analysts sat back before this game started and said, boy, the Eagles better scheme to st stop Mark Ingram because that guy is a serious fucking threat. He put up 380 on the ground this year, combined in all the games in one touchdown. Oh my god! All you people that had to sit there and point out, he's a Heisman Trophy winner, Archfiend! I don't give a flying fuck what trophy winner he is! Anyways, that got so fucking annoying to see comment after comment after comment after comment. He is a nobody as far as running backs go. And that's why I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And how the hell is he going to have a career day against us? And that leads into my second point. The fact that the Eagles gave up so much fucking yardage, two, close to 200 yards on the ground, for a team that has been on fucking lockdown, especially against the fucking run, it's, just, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And again, giving it up to someone like Mark Ingram, who again, had 380 fucking yards combined the entire season. You're going to let him butt out, bust out, it was like, like 88, 86 yards, something like that. And a... <sighs> He's got a Heisman Trophy though. <laughs> Nick Foles. Um, a lot of people are tearing apart Alex Henry for that missed field goal. It was like a 48-yard field goal in the first half. As much of a terrible kicker as he is, and trust me, I don't want to see Alex Henry on this fucking team next year. As much of a terrible kicker he is, uh, a lot of that bad kick is on the shoulder of Nick Foles. He took one of the most flagrantly unnecessary sacks that I have ever seen. And I'm not just over-exaggerating. He was in the pocket. The O-line was stacking pocket time for him. He gets in the grasp, has more than enough time to throw the ball away. He takes what's like, it was like an 18-yard sack. <clears throat> anyway. When you have a kicker that is so fucking shaky beyond the 40-yard line, or excuse me, beyond the 40-yard 40 40, 40 kicking mark, and you're going to take a fucking sack and just basically make it from a probable kick to an improbable kick because now it's over 40 yards for Alex Henry. <sighs> Nick, you, you got to be fucking smarter than that. And 
it's something like that I can only rip apart Nick Foles so much for because something like that can be learned. He can hone his craft and his pocket presence and awareness and timing and when to get the fuck rid of the ball. Something like that can be worked on. If I see Nick Foles doing more of that in the upcoming seasons, then I'm going to stop granting him passes on this. And I'm going to start saying, you know, maybe it's time to assess what quarterback we really want on this team. Now, that's all ifs. And frankly, um, I honestly, deep down, don't think Chip Kelly wants Nick Foles as his quarterback on this team. Do I want him as a quarterback on this team? Absolutely. I'm not going to sit here and say he doesn't deserve to be a starting quarterback. His numbers speak, speak for themselves. I just, I don't know. I just see Chip Kelly. He just does not want his style, that, that, that style of quarterback that Nick Foles brings. <clears throat> I don't know. And another sobering thing that I want to put out there for the Eagles fans, um, a caller to WIP, the, one of the local sports talk stations here, said something that really shook my optimism a little bit for the future. I'm still very optimistic for this team, but shook it a little bit. The caller called in and said, you know, it's, it's really disappointing because this was a year that this team was gelling. They really should have took momentum, pushed through the playoffs, and tried their goddamnedest to get to the Super Bowl because you never know what next year may bring. And I'm just like, well, the team's probably not going to be worse off than they are next year. I mean, sure, there could be injuries or, you know, unforeseen circumstances like that. But he said one thing, and that is, do you guys remember what people were saying about the Atlanta Falcons last year? coming out of the NFC Championship game, and I was like, oh, shit. I was I was where these people had Atlanta in the fucking Super Bowl this year. Now, granted, they had a huge loss at wide receiver, but, uh, you know, a lot of the team was still there. They were still a team that could, you know, get plays done on both sides of the ball, and they were abysmal. They were, they were fucking out of it by week five. And I'm like... Oh, shit! I didn't even give that a thought, but... I mean, I, I always had a thought like that in the back of my mind, but that just goes to show you, you know, you just can't take the next year for granted. So Philadelphia, um, again, I'm personally very optimistic for this team in the future, but, you know, even if we have all the right pieces and whatnot, it doesn't necessarily mean, and granted, I know Atlanta is a completely different team than Philadelphia and a completely different coach team than Philadelphia, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. But just don't take things too for granted. Don't think you're just going to absolutely wrap up the NFC East next year. Anyway, um, that's my final thoughts on the Eagles-Saints game. Anyways, props to the Saints. Uh, they were just flat out the better team, and I got, I got nothing bad to say about them. Um, other games last week. Well, I told you Indianapolis was going to win at home, but I had no idea it was going to be at the hands of the choke of the fucking century. Oh my god. Oh, Andy Reid. Andy Reid and your clock management. Boy, you got criticized by the, all the people in Philadelphia and the media would rip apart Philadelphia fans for saying, oh, oh, they're so unfair to criticize Andy Reid and his mistakes and blah, blah, blah. Oh, how do you like his clock management skills there in Kansas City? You can have him. Oh, you can just keep him. Keep him. Don't give him to anyone else in the league. Just keep him there in Kansas City. Now, a lot of people want to blame the injuries that happened in Kansas City, uh, to Kansas City. And while that is a significant, I mean, when you have a running back that's, if Peyton Manning wasn't playing this year, it would be the MVP, and a number of defensive linemen, and et cetera, et cetera, just uh, basically they got injured every, uh, damn near every end of the ball. But the thing is, is that Kansas City still had no problem scoring. Now, it would be one thing. If this was a route and there was a number of injuries and, and Indianapolis won like 35-7, to 7, I'd be like, oh, well, you know, Kansas City didn't really stand a chance. But here's the thing. Kansas City was scoring pretty much at will for 80% of the game. They were getting turnovers. They were making big plays on offense and defense despite all the injuries. And do you seriously think if all those players were still intact, they were going to put up more than the 40-some points they put up? Think they were going to put up like 60 points? Is it possible? Sure it is. 
But here's the thing, and the people that want to dismiss that this was a choke and more of just an unfortunate set of circumstances for Kansas City due to injuries, when you have a 28-point lead in the third quarter and your defense gets two more interceptions off of Andrew Luck, think about that. You're in the third quarter, you have a 28-point lead, and you get two turnovers. It should be impossible, impossible to lose that game. I don't care if it's all bench players on the field. There is no fucking excuse to lose that game. And anyone that doesn't call that game a complete fucking choke, collapse, terrible coach job by Andy Reid is fucking delusional. Don't blame that loss on the injuries. Could some of those players that were injured kept Indianapolis from winning? Sure. But man, when you have a 28-point lead and you get two turnovers after, at, excuse me, in the third quarter through the fourth, there's no excuse. I don't want to hear any excuses. The players aren't giving any excuses. And on top of that, the Chiefs were still scoring. The Chiefs were still getting turnovers. So even with all those injuries, they're still making plays. But Indianapolis just caught fucking fire. Caught fucking fire, and boy, whew, people are doubting if Andrew Luck isn't the real deal now. Oh my god, that fucking fumble pickup and where he, where he got the fumble recovery and took it in the end zone for a touchdown, that is going to be one of the quintessential moments of his career. That is When he's got a few Super Bowl rings and you look back, that's going to be like, that's the moment where Andrew Luck made his fucking name. And that is going to be the first glimpse of him being just a true fucking superstar in this league. My God. I just, I, again, like, I hate every other team because they're not my team, but when I see someone like Andrew Luck fucking playing the ball, you can't hate that. You cannot hate that for a fucking second. All right, what the hell else happened? Well, I went two for two in the Saturday games and went 0 for two on the Sunday games because I thought the Cincinnati Bengals were a good home team. For, for whatever reason, they convinced me throughout the entire season that they were a good home team. And what did this fucking team do? They just fucking quit. The Cincinnati fucking quitters. I feel, and I tweeted this out during the game, I said, I feel sorry for every Cincinnati Bengals fan that pay their good hard-earned money to sit in the stadium. I said it in a lot more condensed version of this. That pay their good hard-earned money to sit in the stands and watch that team of fucking quitters. Oh my god, that, you could just see, by the fourth quarter, they were just like, we don't give a fuck, just let San Diego score. We don't even care, it's cold, it's rainy, I just want to go home. Oh my god, it, 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 was, it was laughable to, to, to think that these were professional athletes on the field for Cincinnati. Just laughable. Oh boy, and little Andy Dalton, the little gingerbread man, my goodness. Boy, that's just... That's the proverbial quarterback that can do a lot of good and a lot of not good when it's a, it's a big clutch game. I mean, Cincinnati seriously, seriously has to ask themselves, are they content with just getting regular season wins? Because, man, if you think Andy Dalton's going to take you over that hump, you've got another thing coming. It's, it's three one-and-dones. Three one-and-dones in a row for Cincinnati. Man, that's just tough. That's just tough as shit to know. That you, you have a team like that and to know you're going to get Geno Atkins back again next year to get that, get that pass rush again. And boy. Uh, but again, when you saw the product on the field last Sunday, it's a fucking group of quitters. A fucking group of quitters. Where, where, where is that team ever going to go? They gave up. They flat out gave the fuck up. Andy Dalton <laughs> wasn't helping out the cause much at all anyway. You know, throwing interceptions and whatnot. But Jesus Christ. And the final game I got wrong, I picked Green Bay to win on the frozen, dead grass field. Tweeted out during the game that Green, the, the Lambeau field turf looked like a, a third world country soccer field. Um, Jesus Christ, it fucking was like negative 10 there during the game or some shit. But San Francisco is, I told you, there's, there's, there's two teams that I really fear in the NFC right now. That's San Francisco and Carolina. Because they, they, they just formulaically look like they've got it going right now. And um, I'm getting a little bit more of that into the next week's predictions. But 
San Francisco is just a team that just plays smash mouth D, can run the ball, can throw the ball, can scramble with the ball, can quarterback option, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's, it's just a team that is firing on all cylinders, but oh, much like that Eagles game, uh, you just saw 49ers just kill the last of that clock and kick that field goal with no time remaining. I, just, I felt like I was having a flashback of watching the Eagles game the day before. Um, tough loss for Green Bay, but if anything, it's, there's still they're, much like the Eagles, there's promise for Green Bay. Um, you know, taken out of just what what was an abysmal season that got pulled out of the trash once Aaron Rodgers got injured and they you know took a few losses and you know resurrected the Phoenix in the final day by dismantling the Bears. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, got that game wrong. Anyway, let's so go for my predictions for the upcoming divisional round games. I can tell you right now, there is only one game that I'm confident in picking this week. One game. The three others. I think could honestly go either way. Which games are those? Let's find out. New Orleans at Seattle. Oh boy. New Orleans, the team that's won a Super Bowl versus the team whose fans have already celebrated winning a Super Bowl because ESPN picked them to be the Super Bowl champion. And it was amazing. They had a beautiful parade in downtown Seattle. They had all the floats and the confetti. All the fans just, you know, hopped on the bandwagon because they said, someone told us we're going to win the Super Bowl, so we're going to celebrate it already. Anyway, that's why Seattle is some of the worst fucking fans on the planet. <sighs> Seattle, just... Be humble. Be humble until you win a playoff game. Seattle, if you win this game, you have every right in the world to get excited. Because frankly, you haven't done jack shit as a franchise to humble the level of excitement that you have had for a season that really isn't exactly that impressive. It really isn't that impressive. Are you a Super Bowl contender? Absolutely, you are. <sighs> but you're facing a team that's won the Super Bowl before, and you're facing a quarterback who knows how to get it done. Now, granted, Drew Brees, I can tell you right now, um, confidence wise, um, Drew Brees did not play the most confidence commanding game in Philadelphia last week. In fact, he played a terrible game. He basically, he tried to give the Eagles the game the first half with those two interceptions, especially that D'Amico Ryan's pick. Uh, he's got to be fucking smarter than that. D'Amico is running a little spy route on the quarterback and just yoinked him. Just yoinked a fucking pass. And I was like, this isn't the fucking Drew Brees that I know. And then the interception... Um, who did he throw it to Boykin? Anyway, anyway, the second interception was just a, it was just thrown into the secondary to pick off, and I was like, I was like, this game is done. This fucking guy is off his game, and even after that, D'Amico Ryan's interception, you could see that Breeze was hesitant to throw in the slot the rest of the game. So confidence-wise, Drew Breeze either has to hit in all cylinders right away. But, man, he's got a tough fucking defense to try and do that to. Because the Eagles aren't exactly the world's most heart-stopping defense. And the fact that the Eagles shook Drew Brees so early and threw him off his game so quick to, again, like I said, he was so hesitant to throw in the slot the rest of the game once that D'Amico Ryan's pick happened. Oh, my God, that D'Amico Ryan's interception could happen five times against this fucking Seattle defense. Who are you fucking kidding? They're going to fucking destroy him if he throws little lollygag passes like that and doesn't catch the spy watching him, watching his eyes down the field. Um, well, I told you one game I'm confident in, and this is the one game. I think Seattle is going to kick the fucking shit out of the fucking Saints. I don't think it's going to be as bad as that Monday night ass thrashing that they gave them, um, that Seattle gave to New Orleans. But it's going to be a bad loss. Um, I, I Like I said, I can't feel confidence in, confident in Drew Brees after that Eagles game. I know, the Saints fans are going to be, Oh, you're just saying that because you're bitter that our team beat yours. Oh, if it was the Eagles, you'd probably say the Eagles would win in Seattle. Oh, <laughs> straight up, if this was the Eagles playing Seattle right here, the Eagles would get fucking thumped. Would get fucking thumped. So... 
this has nothing to do with me being bitter that the Saints fucking beat my team. The Saints are going to lose, and they're going to lose in Seattle, and if the Saints somehow win, oh my fucking god, I'm going to fucking tear into you Seattle fans like an ever-loving motherfucker, oh my god, but let's be realistic, Seattle's winning this one. Indianapolis at New England. <sighs> Andrew Luck. Boy, you can make a name for yourself. And on a side note, this is the only game in the divisional round that isn't a rematch of two teams playing earlier on in the season. This is the this is the only game. Every other game has been has taken part taken place sometime earlier in the season. Anyway, um, so it's two teams that haven't seen each other this year. So that you'd think breeds and breathes an air of freshness to it and unfamiliarity. Um T.Y. Hilton, <laughs> you, you got to wonder, is anyone on, on New England going to be able to shut him down? Because this motherfucker, uh, who needs Reggie fucking Wayne now, apparently? <sighs> you know, every time I pick against New England... They, they, they end up doing the opposite of. I think this year I only picked four or five games correctly for New England. It's the team that just get, gets smashed down, gets bashed down, then just wins 12 games with their eyes closed. It's just like, it's, they just find ways to win. And it's like, why would you go against them now? Why would you go against them now? And I can't even really think of a good reason because, you know, I, I think Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of this generation. I've said that for a long time, all Patriot hate aside. He's a guy that gets it done, whether he has all-stars or all-nobodies. Pro bowlers or nobodies. Sorry, with the baseball and hockey there. Anyway. I don't know. I see this. I see Andrew Luck just on the fringe. I don't know if he's ready, really ready, quite ready to jump over that hurdle, but I see him on the fringe of having that Joe Montana-esque run and bash out a few Super Bowls here. Now, I don't think Indianapolis is overall ready for that to pull that off yet, but I see him beating the Patriots. I see the Patriots losing at home to the Colts and I see them losing big, like a two-touchdown type loss big. Patriots fans, please bring your anger. I'm used to it. I just, I, I Andrew Luck, I just see, I just see something beyond special in that kid. 49ers at Carolina. This is a game where I actually had my winner picked and I scribbled it out. That's how much of a fucking toss-up I think this game is. I think that's the two teams to beat in the NFC right now. Man, two, two menacing defense, two very similar skill set quarterbacks. Um, I'd give the edge in quarterbacks to Cam Newton in this one because basically you just the heavier weight, and uh, they might be actually the same weight because I think um, Kaepernick's a bit taller, but but still. <sighs> Fuck, man. This again, I might, I might change my pick while I talk myself <laughs> into the video here. Um. <sighs> I, don't, I really don't see home field advantage being much of anything in this game. God, this is just such a fucking coin flip game. Your winner is the team with the black quarterback. All right, that's both teams. Um... Tough game to pick, people, but you know what? Fuck it! San Francisco 49ers are winning. Oh, my God, they're going back to the NFC Championship game for the third year in a row. Carolina, I love that team. I love the way you play. I just... Oh. 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 Let me... Did I pick that right? Yeah, oh, I did have San Francisco. Oh. The one thing I would like it, because Seattle's definitely going to win, and if San Francisco wins, I love seeing an interdivision match 
for the NFC or AFC championship. And if San Francisco wins, that's what you'll get. Now, granted, you could get that as well if New Orleans and Carolina wins, but fucking <laughs> New Orleans ain't going to win shit. Um, it's been a while. Um, someone's probably going to be like, no, it was actually last year that happened. I, I can't remember the last time that division opponents met in the NFC and AFC championship game. Might have been Pittsburgh and the Jets when Sanchez was a quarterback. Last time Pittsburgh went to the... What am I saying? Pittsburgh's not in the same fucking division as the Jets. Jesus Christ. And for some reason, I, I, I said the Jets and I had the Ravens in my head. I, even though I said Sanchez, fucking hell. Anyway, um, forget my lack of football knowledge there. Um, anyway, San Francisco, look for them to win in Carolina. San Diego at Denver. <laughs> uh, I have Denver winning the Super Bowl, but I'm going to tell you straight up. I think they're going to fucking lose this game. I think this is a terrible, terrible, terrible fucking matchup for Denver and Phillip Rivers. Thanks to Cincinnati, is playing with a new air of confidence. Not that Phillip Rivers had to do much of anything, because a little gingerbread man was giving, his, giving the Chargers the ball back right away. And my God, I, I might be a fucking lunatic for picking the fucking Chargers to win, but hey, I had the Ravens picked last year, and you guys jumped on my back. They picked uh, picked the win in the divisional round against the Denver Broncos, and you guys all thought I was an idiot for picking that. Well, so just just think back to to last year before you jump on my back about this one. Um, and the scary thing is, is that prophecy, if San Diego makes it and wins the Super Bowl, and this is not why I'm I'm picking them. It's just it's just a coincidental thing to point out. That whole thing of the last four Super Bowl teams being in the home opener against the Philadelphia Eagles going on to win the Super Bowl, and now this is year number five, and San Diego played the Eagles in the home opener. Holy shit, that will be some freaky deaky fucking shit if that happened again, but seriously, I don't think San Diego's winning the Super Bowl or getting past the AFC Championship game. So there we have it, people. Eagle season's over. Who that Saints? Saints are the team playing Seattle this week, and I don't see them going much farther. But anyway, I like these games this week. Like I said, three of these games could go either way. Other than that New Orleans game against Seattle, at Seattle, um, I think all the other games are just going to be just absolute shootouts and should be good football. And this was a really fucking, this division, excuse me, this wild card round was fucking great. Other than the fucking Cincinnati Bengals being a bunch of fucking quitting turds. Good, good, good fucking wild card weekend. Even though my team lost. Still good football on all four game, all three games. I don't even count the fucking Cincinnati Bengals as a game because you have to have professional pro players in a game. And those weren't professionals, those were quitters. Um, let's see what happens in this upcoming week. And, Ah, what the hell. Fuck the Dallas Cowboys. Have a great day, everyone.